Good evening, and welcome to Elliot Astro Imaging episode 37. I am sorry for the delay for tonight as I wanted to get this done at 10 o'clock. Um, trying to get the Iris Nebula took me a little bit longer than expected. Sorry for the delay, but I did put it up there. If you were watching from my website, watching from Facebook, or wherever it may be, it took a little bit, but we have it in view for tonight. Um, right now, I'm going to pull it up for you so this way everybody can see it on Starry Night 7. There it is. Now, it's a little bit off from where it's supposed to be is because I wanted to get it centered from the other camera. But it is NGC 7023. Uh, it also took me a long time to figure it out because apparently, according to Starry Night 7, there's like five objects that have the exact same number. Whatever that means, I don't know. And so it did make sense. Every time I typed in NGC 7023, it would give me the other object, which is not exactly right. I type in Iris Nebula, and that didn't work either. So... Uh, Get on your game, Starry Night, because I have no idea what the hell's going on. Uh, maybe it's an update. I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. But with that being said, we are set. I just have to start the guiding, which won't take long at all, is getting them both centered, which is the most important thing. I'm gonna move this over here. And then that bright star that you see on Orion, I'm actually going to do this one to the right. And then this one to the left is that bright star right there. That is the iris. The iris is actually going to be right here. And so you're going to be able to see them both in view. Uh, this week I plan on moving this camera up. So then this way they'll both match to the very top. So this way you won't have to worry about it. I focused both of them. All right. I'm going to connect both of them. I just ran out of time with it getting dark at 9 o'clock. I just ran out of time. I uh, spent at least a half an hour trying to find the Iris Nebula. Now, of course, Iris sits at the time 22 degrees above the horizon. We have until it gets to about 60 degrees above the altitude above the horizon. So we have at least three hours that we can get. Because the way it's supposed to go is it follows the southern, northern celestial pole all the way around. So we should be in great shape. This is one of the ones that does not set. It's called circumpolar. So this one will never set. So we should be in great shape tonight. It, we're getting out of the lower horizon of the muck and everything. So we should be doing really well. I don't think we're going to have any problems. The, the high haze that was from earlier this evening is starting to go away. So there's no moon. There's no anything. We don't have to worry about nothing. So we should be in good shape. Now it's going back east. So that's great. And where the iris sits on the actual finder is this little speck right there. This little thing right there, that's the iris right here. I think from last last time, I think this screwed it up horribly. But we'll see. We'll see how guiding goes. I don't I can't make any guarantees. This is gonna be interesting to see how it goes. Okay, we'll try it. I can't make any guarantees tonight, but we're going to try. 70-23. And go. And then we'll, we'll sequence this one. And go. All right, now we're getting better. Okay, 0.51. All right. Stay right there. That's where I want it. 0.5. I think it was not the episode before, but the one before that. 
after I was having some issues with the mount, I had it going at about 0 0.36, 0 0.37. Well, that's not bad. Point four three. Even better. Because we're doing 15 minute exposures on the QHY and 16 minute exposures on the Orion. So pretty much the same exposure time as what I did last one with the Sombrero. Only thing is, we don't have to worry about the Meridian Flip this time. Alright, here we go. We're at 97% on this one, so we're going to make this one bigger. There's not, there's not much drift at all on this. That is great. I really do need to get that other camera in the middle. That would be nice to get that one in the middle. Oops. Here, let me move this over to the left. Zoom it at 1.5. Right down in the middle here. There we go. Ho, 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 ho. Now that one's beautiful. Couple of dust motes, but still, that that one's nice. Wow. Alright, we're about just about seventy percent. Now, if I haven't brought it up in the previous episodes before, if everybody, if anybody is new that's watching these videos, the colors that you see here of the purple, green, red, and blue, those are called hot pixels, and those happen when the camera heats up, when it's taking a long exposure, these colors will show up. And when I take darks, biases and flats which are called calibration frames these will go away so these colors that you see here are going to be gone so then this will be a nice smooth image um, well, also when I take the flats these dust motes that you see here one two three and then there's a fourth one on the left over here the dust motes will go away too because it's taking the calibration frames from these so it's subtracting it so you'll get a nice pristine image from left to right and then I'll process it on Photoshop and increase it to 400 percent actually see the stars between it and zoom this one to two I want to see stars in the middle of what they're going to do. That's perfect right there. I want to see what the stars do if 
they move after the image is taken. And you can see it in this camera too. You can see the red, the green, and the blue pixels on this one too. You can see them all scattered throughout this entire image. Alright, here we go. Image number two. It moved, but there wasn't that much drift. And now this one's going to be stacked on top of the of each other. Not bad. Ah, oh, darn it! I didn't see the uh, it move. I wasn't paying attention. Here's what I'll do. That is really cool. I'm just going to preview files. Load images, desktop, Iris Orion. We'll preview both of these. And then we'll be able to see the stars move. That's the first one, and that's the second one. If anything, the stars actually look better. Yeah, I like that one. Now, this looks like it's a haze of some sort. This is the actual gas that's in front of the stars. So, like, you see a whole bunch of stars here on the corner here. You don't see much in this area here because there's so much gas. That is really cool. And the stars really don't move. So, that that's really cool. Let me see how much they moved on this one. Not much. And you still look pretty good. Not much at all. I'll probably take one more and then we'll call it quits for tonight for the, the actual broadcast. So then this way we'll be able to see three of them. So when this Orion, this third Orion image is over, then I will stack them and get everything. I think what I might do is I might close the door because the outside door is on. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna close the door.
Now, looking at that from a distance, that looks kind of neat. Looks kind of cool looking at it from five feet back. Not too bad. You can actually start to see some of the dust lanes, so maybe this might actually turn out better than I thought. Actually, here's what we'll do. We got two of them. We might as well do the Orion one while we're waiting. At least this one will be in color. Yeah, this is going to turn out really well. This is, if I can get five or six of these, this is going to turn out really, really well. And of course, the other thing too is the guiding might have been bad in the beginning only because of how high it was in the sky. So if it was like really low in the sky. So right now, it's at a pretty decent, I mean, it's, I mean, one of them is at um, 29 degrees. So we're looking at about roughly 30 degrees above the horizon right now at 11.47 p.m. Where we were, we were about like here, like 22-ish, so probably like right about here is where we were when we started. So it's moving up along this line, going all the way up. Now, another thing, I'm sure a lot of people have noticed this, is that the circle that you see here is red. And the first few episodes that you've noticed this year, and even dating back to last year, it was green. And the problem that I had was, I was going off of the galactic pole, not the north celestial pole, which is right here. Uh, the galactic pole is actually right over here, and it's not exactly following the circle, so I was actually on the wrong thing. Not that it's a huge deal, but at least this way it's actually, you know, right, because there's Polaris right there, and then the celestial pole is right there, so this Polaris is going to go around the circle, around the northern celestial pole. So where we're imaging is where it, this is going to follow up all the way around until it goes all the way back and then continues that vicious cycle. Or 81%. Okay. And then there you can see the next episode we're going after this sucker on the next episode. Because between now and early June this thing's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. This one's called Panstar's C2015 ER61. So this will be the next episode. We're going to try to see if we can get this one. And this is going to move. It's going to continuously keep going this way and get brighter. Now, is it going to look like this? No. Uh, lovely Starry Night decided to make this look like a gigantic fireball. It's not. But it's 6.18... Still pretty good. I also want to see how these stars move. Not bad. That, that, that one actually is, is darker and it looks nicer. So that's not bad. How does the nebula look? Well, that's getting better. Now you're going to be able to start seeing some of the actual detail inside of it. That's getting much, much better. Okay, cool. Oh. I missed that too. <laughs> Wasn't even paying attention. 
We'll have to take a look and see. So worried about the comet, I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit darker. Because I think it's starting to finally get above 30 degrees. So now it's going to start looking better. And the stars are looking rounder too. So I'm going to probably be out here for a while. Probably for about at least another hour. So I can probably get maybe four more of these ones. And then get three or four more of these ones. So I can have at least an hour and a half of exposure time on both. And then maybe we might be able to pull some detail out of each one. I'm really hoping so. Alright, let's see what this one turns out to be. Not bad. Not bad at all. Alright. And then this one's got about just less than about three minutes left. So uh, when this Orion one is done and I look at the final product on this one for the live stacking, then I will call it quits for tonight. I think this is probably the best focus I've had with this camera in a long, long, long time. What I'm going to probably get eventually over the next couple of weeks is I'm going to get a minus violet filter for this camera here. This will eliminate this bloating that you see here. You can see like a little tinge at the ends of each star. The minus violet filter will correct that. Um, it says it's an aprochromatic sigma macro lens. There is still some chromatic aberration on all the stars, and uh, with that, the minus valid filter will help eliminate some of that. So this way, the stars will look a little bit better, especially the brighter ones. But still, it does not look too bad. So we got about an, about another less than a minute left. And here we go. Much better. And it's getting darker too. That's great. And it's getting darker and it's getting better. So you're actually going to start seeing some of the dust lanes in here now. So it's actually getting further out and you're going to start seeing more detail in this. And it's actually starting to turn out even better on the outside corners, too. So, with that being said, I'm going to get about four or five more of these before I call it quits. But I'm going to end the broadcast tonight. The next clear night, I'm not really sure for the schedule. But I will keep everybody posted and let everybody know. With that being said, I want to, again, thank you for everybody for watching and have a great night. Bye.